What's up, everybody? Another episode of the Joe and Joe Show. We have myself, Joe Rotunda, the assistant matchmaker for Main Events, Jolene Mazzone, head matchmaker for Main Events, and former NABF Matchmaker of the Year. Behind the scenes, we have Anthony Haynes. He's our millennial and producer. Alexis Swolovin, creative director. Today, we have the legendary Lou Cabela as our guest. He's a former top executive at HBO, produced a number of films throughout the years, 2020 International Boxing Hall of Fame inductee, owner of one of the most successful minor league baseball teams in the Flying Squirrels, and a CEO of Debella Entertainment. What's up, Lou? How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. First of all, backyard with the scotch, waiting cheers. to throw a few F-bombs out there. Cheers, guys. Salute. Cheers. Where's Apollo Gotti? Oh, he's right here by my side, sitting down so far. He'll make an appearance, I'm sure. Go ahead, Joe. All right, cool. Let's um, yeah, let's jump right into it. So we're gonna go into our segment. It's called the scorecards. I'm gonna go off six rounds of of sporting relating topics, and you're either gonna score to ten nine, in which you're in favor of it, or you're gonna deduct a point in which you're not in favor of it. So round one, women fighting three minute rounds. Um, deduct a point. Okay, deduct a point. Two All right, minutes, round two. Right? You're for two minute, Lou? Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's, first of all, they're not making enough money to fight two minute rounds, and it's a better product. The rounds are more active. The biggest problem television networks and streaming services have with boxing is that the bouts are too long and often not exciting enough. Right. So like, and they're not giving a lot of time up for women right now. Yeah. So why would you want to make the rounds longer? And I haven't even started with the biggest issue, which is women that are much higher risk for head injury and yeah. concussion according to many studies. So Agreed. why would you make the sport less safe and pay them less and make their product less attractive when women's boxing at the moment needs all the help it can get? Yes. Agreed. Yeah, I feel like I just learned so much. All right. Round two. What, um, testing fighters for marijuana? Fuck no. Stop. <laughs> what about testing promoters for marijuana? A lot of us would be fucked. <laughs> Come on. Testing me for marijuana, I just smoked a do before I got on the air with you guys. There, there, would, be, there would be no promoters left in the There'd business. There would be nobody left. You would, Kathy not even Duba Russell Pelz, you have no one left. No, Kathy Duba would be left. That's it. But she wouldn't have a staff. <laughs> I smoked weed with Aram at Todd DeBuff's wedding. Oh, classic. All right, cool. Round three. Um, no, 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 no. You, you want to you hear actually this amusing story? I was at the wedding, <laughs> and I and people were partying. It was at this like mansion. It was, and you know people were partying. And there was a, there was a lot of cool people. There was a cool crowd. The people mm -hmm. were partying. They were drinking heavily, and I wasn't like drinking at the time. Like so I had like one. I was like nursing a beer, and I and I and then I'm walking or like I'm just checking out the mansion a little bit. I'm sort of wandering, and I like smell weed, so I start following my nose, and then there's like the staircase going down and there's like a light at the bottom of the stairs and i'm like i start like creeping around and i'm like hello and it's like, and i hear who the fuck is it <laughs> and i'm like bob it's lou he goes come on down i got the bomb <laughs> i got the bomb i love it yeah oh that's funny all right cool round three mayweather versus pacquiao two mm. Ten nine. All right, cool. Uh, YouTubers fighting. This is a tough one. Okay, YouTubers fighting. I'm going to change the question a little bit. YouTubers fighting like real boxing. Deduct the point. YouTubers fighting, not making believe it's professional boxing and having their own thing. I'm ten nine. Like a celebrity boxing match. Like yeah, why not? I mean, and you know what? They're good athletes. They're younger. You can evenly match them. I could have fun with that. If it was like, I don't want to see them making believe that it's like pro boxing. I don't want it governed by rating, ratings organizations giving out phony belts. And, well, that's and, another story. And yeah. real boxing judging under state commissions. It should be more like a, you know, a, 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 a a higher form of white collie celebrity boxing under its own under its own thing. That's how I would what I think. So 
See, I don't have a problem with it because I think there's many times where we've all done it with people in less amateur fights. We put guys in, you know, their first or second fight with the guy with no amateur fights. It's no different. They're on the same, as long as they're on the same level. No, that's the whole key is, is, is the key is the matchmaking too. It needs to be overseen appropriately, but not like real boxing. Like if two guys are both goofball, who gives a shit? They're not going to hurt each other. What the fuck right. are you doing? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, True. But like, I, I got to tell you, I was watching the dude, and I don't even know his name, but the dude that fought Jake Paul in his last fight. Mm -hmm. Kevin Farmer was on the same card. What's that guy's name? The guy that fought Jake Paul? KS KSI? No. No, no, no. Um, no. Or no, that was Paul. The yeah, guy that, that fought the in the last January show. I don't know. Forget about it. Whatever his name oh, is. Oh, he was, yeah, I know. Who I don't know what his name okay, is. I'm, I'm, I'm 60 years old. I, I'm, I'm out of shape. I've been, I haven't shaved. I've, I've been drinking scotch for, for, I can walk up off of this lounge chair and beat the shit out of that kid tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So like that kid, that was just ridiculous, but there needed to be a level of like, of, of like uh, opponent approval or scrutiny but, so you could gauge whether you know maybe you have to send the guys to boxing gyms for a month each and get the trainers to assess their, their relative you know skill level you know right. something's got to be but i got no problem with it as what it is it's it's celebrity boxing not as professional boxing I'm not right. at that. all right yeah all right uh clarissa shields calling herself the gloat you believe she's the gloat I'm not sure she's the gloat, but I'm 10-9 on her calling herself the gloat. Confidence. Yeah, and she's entitled to think that. She had a hard upbringing. That girl, like, put, you know, dealt with a lot in her life. She's a tough-ass woman. She's absolutely one of the best that's done it. I'm not convinced she's 100% yet the best right now, but she's in the group that can be argued. And, and she's also in the group to argue about for the greatest of all time. So her calling herself that I'm okay with 10-9. Um, as to what I think, I think the jury's out. Still out, yep. Yeah. All right, cool, last round. Um, Pete Rose being banned from the Hall of Fame after all these years. No, on one, on, okay. <laughs> Fuck no, come on. I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna free, people are gonna be surprised at this one. Um, the duck the point. Really? Yeah. So you know what? If they put him in, I wouldn't be upset. It's a hard one. There are other pieces. There are pieces of shit in the Hall of Fame and guys sure. that did worse things in their lives. Um, I, I think he did some really bad shit. I, I, I have issues as to whether he really owned up to it. Um, they're keeping guys out for steroids and and for suspicion of steroids. Right. So, like, I mean, should Pete Rose be in before Barry Bonds? Um, I'm not sure about that. So I'm going to stick with the – I'm going to say that if he got in, it wouldn't upset me, but I'm at a deductive point. I think he did some bad shit, and I don't think he owned it. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Fuck it. Let him in. <laughs> All right. Um, your current – the scorecards is over. You killed it. Uh, current number one and two pound for pound in the world right now. Who do you got? Canelo. And. It's not going to pick him. Watch. I think he's going to. No. Nope. Lomachenko. Oh, he did. That seems and, to be and the reason for that is honestly, um, look, he, he's beatable, but he's brilliant, and his footwork really? is like the best I've ever seen in my life. And I love watching him, and I think he's impossible for guys smaller than him or his own size. He's already stretching himself into upper weight, you know, higher weights. Yeah. Um, I think if had he ever fought as much as I love Salido, if he ever fought him again, he'd whitewash him. Um, Crawford is the other guy that you think about, but I'm sorry, I, I, I just – the resume hasn't fought the level of competition that allows me to call him pound for pound. 100%, I 100% agree. Yeah. yeah, but that's a question that we have on every show, and everybody's been picking Canelo on the pinko. So, 
Do you, Lou, do you think HBO will ever come back into boxing? No. No. I think if they were ever going to come back into boxing, now's when they should do it. Revive boxing after dark. Put up a budget. Let me be the matchmaker. I don't care. Only give me a couple of shows a year. I'll make the fights and, and, and I, among the other promoters. All of the rest of us that have incredible rosters of talent and we don't have a platform, let me make boxing after dark and bring it back on HBO Max or whatever these new services is. I'll guarantee you if we do boxing, bring Lampley back to boxing after dark. Yep. And let Dave Harmon or Ross Greenberg or whoever produce it. And let's do boxing after dark and put it on Max. I will like do what I did in the old days. Yeah, you know, I, 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 don't think, I think it, now's the time for them to come back, especially. Yeah, but they but they won't. They I know, won't. but especially with the heavyweights, not the big heavyweights. I'm talking about the mid-level heavyweights who all have something. They could have a whole category. They could have six boxing after dark that are night of young heavyweights. Yep. Yeah. I mean, among everybody else, we have as good a talent as or better than any promoter out there if we aggregate our fighters. Yeah. And by the way, right now I've already explained to my fighters. I don't give a fuck if you lose, but you're going to fight who's offered to you. And like, yes. if, and by the way, if you win, you're going to move way ahead. And if you fight a great fight, I'm not giving up on you if you lose. Mm -hmm. Right? So now's the time. Fighters have to fight. Promoters have to fucking promote. Yep. And, and, and if HBO was ever going to get back, by the way, Peter Nelson could use some big good publicity right now. <laughs> well, that's another question we have. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we'll get there. Let's, when you were at HBO, what was the hardest fight you made with a promoter? Uh, at almost every fight. There, there were a lot, you know, look, there were promoters that were easier for me to work with than others. You know, it's, it's interesting because Aram and I almost killed each other, like literally physically and in other ways on numerous occasions. But once right. I knew that he was willing to make a deal and I wanted to make a deal, it never took a long time. I was always able to do business with main events. And, right. and, um, and I also had the kind of relationship with main events that it's extended into almost a friendship where, where I trusted the fact, like, like if I said, this is, what, this is all I'm going to do, stop busting my balls, that we were able to close the deal. Right. And, and I, I, had a, I had a relationship with Cedric where I knew he had a lot of talent, but he didn't know what to do with it. So people thought that like, I was giving all these favorites. I was bullying Cedric. I made Shane Mosley fight real fights. I made, he had a shitload of talent. I mean, I he made, did. and I made incredible fights. People forget about Kushner, man, but Kushner in the 90s had a stable. Oh, you know? he did. He had a good you know, And I was able right now, by the way, we have more heavyweights than any of these big guys who have up and coming heavyweights. We could sit there and just make heavyweight shows and, and, and do great stuff and, and build Absolutely. some heavyweight championship contenders. Agreed. You know, you match, I'll match my prospects with other people's prospects. If my guy doesn't win, if he's as good as I think he is, he's going to fight well and he's still going to have a career. We, we, we got to do that kind of thing, but I would love to see boxing after dark come back. There he is. There he is, Scotty. Apollo. All right, he made his appearance. Were you uh, a lot bigger? Jesus. He's huge. Were you a fan? Of, were you a fan of the sport growing up, or you kind of just fell into this thing? No, no, no. I was a, a fan my whole life. Oh, all right. In fact, I was a fan, of, a boxing fan, probably. I was boxing and baseball from the time I was literally able to walk almost, because my grandparents, my grandfathers, and my dad, you know, like the NFL also, but whatever. But my my, my grandparents, who I spent a lot of time with. It was baseball and boxing for them. And then once I got a whiff of Ali and I was a little, little kid, I worshipped Ali from the time I was a little kid. So it was boxing and baseball for me my whole life. So it's, it's sort of cool that I work in both, even though Major League Baseball is trying to destroy minor league baseball right now. I saw that. That's shitty. Yeah, All right, cool. you got um, – what's one of the biggest upsets in a fight that you saw coming? Oh, that I saw coming? The easiest yes. – the one I saw coming and I won a lot of money on it was Holyfield Tyson. Oh, uh, okay. The 19 to 1 on Holyfield. Yeah, yeah. 19 to 1. Yeah, the Duva's seen that too. Yeah, 19 to 1. Mm -hmm. um, Holyfield told me, and I know Jolene knows the story because everybody may eventually the story. There was an incident with Mike and Holyfield supposedly over a pool table. And Mike, Mike, Mike was the toughest guy in a lot of ways on the team in terms of perception. He, he was this incredible knockout puncher and whatever, and he was this tough guy. 
but Evander never really bought into it. And, right. and Mike used to bully people for the pool table, supposedly. And I got the story from Holyfield. I've never confirmed the story with Mike. But Holyfield told me that, like, you know, everyone used to put their money down. And if Mike wanted to play, if Mike didn't respect the person who had the money down, Mike just knocked the fucking money off the table and played, you know? And, um, and there was a night where, like, Holyfield's money was on the table, but somebody else's money was on the table before him. And, and Mike, tried, Mike, Mike knocked the other guy's money off the table. And Holyfield supposedly said to Mike, you ain't knocking my money off the table. You knocked my money off the table. We got a problem. And, and he, he basically said that Mike showed him the respect to back it off. And he said he knew he had him from that moment in time. And he always he believed, a bully. He, right, he, he always believed that he had the mental edge on Mike and that he would beat Mike. One way or the other, he would beat Mike when they fought. And he convinced me so much of it that I took the 19 to 1. And by the way, 19 to 1 are amazing. If you could ever get 19 to 1 on Evander Holyfield, you take it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. All right. What's um? What's one of the worst fight weeks you've ever been a part of? There's been so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no bullshit. There've been so many of them. Um, it's almost every one. You know, I never thought about that question. I mean. The end of the week was so stressful that Galata Bo was one of them. Oh, uh, sure. You know, the one where there was the, the riot at the garden. I mean, right. also because I really, I got called by Julian. I mean, after the riot and everything else, I got called. I, I was up all night. I was there giving up, you know, working out details that I letting them see tapes. Because I didn't want to give them the tapes from the fight, but they wanted to review uh, angles we had in the truck and my bosses were already asleep and I'm getting calls from like the head of all of like Time Warner um, you know secure you know, uh, you know basically saying you got to assist the police now and whatever and you know it was a very stressful week um, I don't know I mean I, that, that one jumps out at me right all right no sounds it all right let's uh I mean there are other yeah. weeks by the way there are other weeks no you know it was a really bad week too what was the <laughs> What was the Lennox Lewis fight with Oliver McCall where McCall was clearly completely fucked up leading to the fight? They couldn't find him. He had a mental breakdown. He cried. That was the second fight. Okay, that one, that, I never believed that fight should have happened and I was vocal the whole week about it. That fight, that week sucked, you know, because it, should, it never should have just happened. He was so, they just sort of like found him on a bench and dragged him into the ring. And he was clearly mentally fucked up, unprepared or whatever. And what happened in the ring was what you would have expected. Yeah. Right. Holy shit. All right, let's uh veer away from boxing for a sec. If Trump, President Trump served you with a life sentence and said you can ha- you can pick your cellmate, it's Kanye West or Donald Trump. Who do you pick? Oh uh, but Kanye West. Oh, <laughs> yeah? I mean uh, if- Trump would be my cellmate? Yeah, you would just, I would torture I would, him. I, I wouldn't, I, I'd wind up doing a lot more than my bid. I'd do a life sentence if I was in the same room with Trump. No, nah, I'd uh, Trump because I would torture him and bully him and mess his hair up and all that shit. It would be fun. Yeah, but I sort of think you could do that to either guy. <laughs> that is true. I uh, here's the difference. Ball. Here's the difference. I hate Donald Trump. I don't hate Kanye West. I don't like Kanye West. I don't know him well enough to like him or dislike him, but I like, there's too much about him I don't like, but Trump I despise, so if for me, Kanye, much easy choice. That's a good point. Uh, one, uh, one, of the, one of the best managers you've worked with. You gotta go way, way, way back. Way, way, way back. Mike Trainer, who was with Ray Leonard when I first started at HBO. A very very smart guy, a terrific manager. Um, there were loads of you know. It's hard to say the best manager. I mean, you know, today there are guys that I respect. Like look, like out there right now, I you know, I may have argued with the guy on occasion, but I think he. You argued with somebody? No. McConnelly's a good manager now. I think that that uh, there are a lot of. I think the guy the kid the guy that has. 
um, Regis and, and uh, you know, Sam is a good young manager. I think that the guy that manages uh, um, who, who, the 40 pounder from uh, Ramirez, uh, Rick, I think he's a good manager. I think there are, there are some, you know, Mc, you know, right now McWhorter is establishing an incredibly powerful stable and a huge one. I, I wonder whether how it's gonna be how easy it's gonna be to manage that. But I think he in a short period of time has accumulated a tremendous amount of talent as a manager. Um, you know, the managers are the guys that do the most for their fighter. Who's the you know, other, I gotta tell you the other thing, by the way. I know managers that have been thrown to the curb when the managers supported the fighter through years of bad performances oh, and bad health. Years of bad performances and bad health kept the fighter alive, kept the fighter relevant and then got tossed to the curb the second the bigger name guy came into the picture. So, you know, it's hard to say, like, you know, there's managers deliver different things. Some managers deliver expertise. Other managers su support the kid's life, pay his rent, pay him money. I mean, if, you, if you've supported a kid's life economically for years, you shouldn't get thrown to the curb the second the kid makes money. Right. You know, so there's, there's different managers. For, I, I, I've been a, lucky to work with a lot of managers who are – who are good managers. Hey, look, if you consider Heyman a manager, he's the best in the business. Right. Period. Okay, I just consider him to be much more than a manager. So I, I, don't, I don't like, you know, Heyman winning manager of the year is sort of unfair to every other manager. You know what Absolutely. I mean? He's not. Well, he's great to his fighters, and he's, he's, you know, you can't say a bad word when it comes to his fighters, but he's not a manager. He's a promoter. Here, or some hybrid or, or both at the same time. But, but, um, but if you were looking, if you were viewing him, if you were considering him in that category, he's the best I've ever seen. Um, okay. He's up there. I mean, he's, you know. He, he is up there, but I just, I don't consider him a manager. I don't. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think he's more than a manager. I can't he consider runs, him a manager. He runs a streaming platform. Yes. He runs the streaming so in, platform. In my, he's, he's an executive that takes care of his fighters. Well, it's not really, I'm sorry, it's not a streaming platform. He doesn't run a streaming platform. I'm, I'm, I'm misspeaking. He runs a brand. He runs a brand. A programming brand. He runs yeah. a programming brand. Now, does that legally make him a manager or not? That's legal. You know what I mean? But in terms of traditional functions, he's much more than a manager. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I kept saying streaming service. He's not. But PBC is a brand, and he is the, the guy, the, the, he is the decision maker that runs that brand. And he's very good at it. But he's also, if you view him as a manager, he's done what, I mean. I mean well, well, I, don't, well. I disagree. I don't think he's very good to his fighters, but I don't think he's good for fucking boxing. That's it, not the question. Right. But I think that's what's killed it is, you And know, by the way, if you did that, if you did that, analysis and and consider put Heyman in his own little box for the time being because you're not sure he's a manager or promoter right right then look at all the major fucking promoters in the world and you tell me who was really good for boxing you could you you tell me that like that that like king and arab was good for boxing for all those years when they were on top i mean who's really been good for boxing everyone's been good for their business because we don't have a commissioner we don't have one entity I yeah, mean, but I think know, we lost a lot of solid guys within the PBC to be bigger than what they are. I used to, when I first started, go to a party, people knew Fernando Vargas, Robbie Peden. I'm talking about different level fighters. Everybody knew who these guys were. He has a stable in Heyman of great fucking talent. And great characters. No, his, he does, his, his fighters aren't adequately promoted. And he doesn't want right. it that way because he is the, he is the decision maker at PBC. And, and, and he, wants, that, the, and he was, wants the brand. He wants PBC, the brand. But I'm saying for. he has a fan coming into this sport. I think it's hurt it. I think that there's if, a, if, I, I think the biggest problem with me, I think the biggest problem with PBC and the biggest mistake, if, if you want to view a mistake that Al may have made, was that Al needed his Dana White. Because Al's a ghost. I, and by the way, I get along with Al. I talked to Al I've talked to Al multiple times during this pandemic, and, and I don't work with him anymore, but he and I are cool, and we've been friendly 
for 20 plus years. I mean, a long time. That's great. I'm not friendly with no, the but, I don't dislike the guy. I'm just saying how I No, no, but the point I'm making is this. The point I'm making, though, is that, that I think he made a mistake not having traditional understanding the value that a good promoter that a good promoter adds not understanding you know the fertitas are smart <laughs> business people and and ufc has been a had a lot of smart guys working there for a long time but they needed dana as a mouthpiece and and, and as a promoter and as a you know part of the process obviously dana's a smart guy but but they needed dana as the, the face and voice of usc and pbc yeah didn't have a face and voice because Al was never going to be that. No, no. And they needed one, not, not five. That's the problem. All right, who do you... No, there were never really any because no, nobody was free enough to, to do it. Well, that's I mean, what I'm saying. No one was free enough to just be a Dana White and say whatever the fuck they wanted to. You needed it. I don't want to be an egomaniac, but I'm not so sure there was anybody else that Al was working with as a promoter for hire that could have done another than me uh, out of the people he was working with. Well, I don't think there's of... anybody he was working with that had <laughs> the personality that you do and just the swag. It's totally different. Well, that's part I'm of the thing. Fucking way. big head about it, but it's true. I mean, you, you there's only certain people in this business that have that swag and that could pull shit off. You're what? I agree with that. You know, because you're fucking nuts. You got it. Yeah, that, that comes with the you territory. Know, White is fucking nuts. Exactly. Comes with the territory. Exactly. You know. Who do you? I got to tell you something. I'm sitting in my backyard right now, and you can't see this. Hold on. Let me see if I can flip the screen for one second. If, if that's doable. Hold on. You just press them. Got it. They take a little away. Um, I'll flip back. Um, this fucking pandemic. Everyone is talking about the sky looks clearer. Like I went out on the boat for a few minutes the other day. Uh -huh. You know, and um, and and the Long Island Sound, the water is clearer than I have ever seen it. Oh, really? And and you know the 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 air smells better, is better, whatever. The birds and stuff in my backyard, like now when there's like very little traffic and like I'm seeing like cardinals and blue jays and orioles and it's like a fucking baseball league, you know, in my backyard <laughs> right now. If, if Peter Nelson was to fight Steven Espinoza in bare knuckle boxing, who would win? Oh my God. Um, I'd probably make Espinoza a favorite. Agreed. Yeah. That's fair. All right. What, um, I don't know if I'm you'll answer this. I'm not going to say something obnoxious like I take the both in a tag team match. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> um, one of the more, Overrated promoters in the business right now. Let's get nuts. Just fucking really, answer you know, it. Just answer it. You want me to answer it for you? Go ahead, answer it. Answer it. <laughs> I, I, not, you know what? I, I don't want to answer it. I'll tell you why. Because here's the real truth. I, I realize this particular, I want to tell you something. This is also honestly true. I realize this more over the course of this pandemic. I, I've been in this business for a lot of fucking years, and even guys I don't get along with that well. In the world. Like Oscar has thugs me blocked on Twitter, but Oscar was one of the greatest fighters I ever worked with. And actually, when I left HBO in the beginning, and I and I and I, you know, I was on my own. I did some stuff with Oscar, and he was actually like was nice to me at a time where a lot of people weren't. And 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 um, right now for the best of my fighters, when I don't have a platform deal, I have to get along with everybody. And, and, and I'm not going to, I, I, there's no need to go there right now because you know what? I don't, we don't need unnecessary divisiveness. I don't want to be a doomsayer, but boxing's got a lot of problems right now. And we had them leading into the pandemic and the whole world's going to have a lot of problems coming out of the pandemic. Absolutely. And boxing's problems existed before you got, you got a, you got a little fucking soft on me during this pandemic. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know what? You I got mean, a little soft. Maybe it, I have a little bit, but but, but right. the, on, the, on the flip side of it, I've gotten angrier and crazier in some ways. But but uh, maybe I have gotten a little soft. But you know what? Right now, I want to I want to see my sport get through the the aftermath of this. I want to see my friends that I care about not get pushed out of the business because we right. don't have a big deal someplace. Right. 
And I want some of the other entities out there, like an HBO, like a Peter Nelson, to say, I could use something on HBO Max so I generate more than under 100,000 subs on my first day. And if HBO announced that they're coming back with Boxing After Dark on HBO Max, I think you would see a subscriber jump. I really do. Yeah, I and, do and, too. And I think that another player out there, if not HBO, maybe it's Impact. That I know Steve Marcano's out there doing some stuff at Impact. I know also Impact, you know, they want to do this and they probably are going to be able to, but the budget's not very big. Maybe they want to throw a few more dollars in because right now it's a great opportunity. There are 97% of the fight. And it's also, also the, fight the fight network also. There's a lot of other players potentially, but you need to invest some money. Right now, there are a lot of fighters. And how about all of the women in boxing not named Clarissa, Michaela, Amanda, and Katie? How about oh, the rest of them? Load. There's a shit. And all those women need a platform, and they don't have one. Yeah. And right now, there's an opportunity for somebody, you know? Um, you know, I don't think Dana has the time or energy or inclination in the boxing business to start from the ground up. But if he did, this would be a great time to invest from the ground up as opposed to think you need to go and buy somebody. 97% of the fighters right now are hungry and ready and working out at home and want to make a living. Yeah. And if we put them in great fights, you're a matchmaker. You know what, Jaleen? The reason I think I'm one of the best promoters is not only that I have a little bit of panache, maybe a little bit of, like, insanity, but it's also I think yeah. I'm a good matchmaker. I think I'm the I'm among the oh, most. Oh, absolutely. I, don't I think I'm one of the best matchmakers that. in the business. So, so because as a matchmaker. Because the difference with you as a promoter, as a matchmaker, you, you get their the storyline. You the total package. And well, there is boxing's about storylines. The people need to care. The yes. people need to care. Why do we care? Mm -hmm. You know, we're telling stories. Like, I got an example of something. It's leaking out now that one of my kids, Mikel Lapierre, is mm -hmm. going to fight um, Pedraza on one of these first ESPN shows. Okay? But right now, every, everything's so uncertain. Everybody's got so much to do that people don't, like, the stories aren't being told. But this kid has worked for 10 years full time while. You know, being a, you know, building an undefeated record, fighting a, a, a good effort in a world title fight, right. you know, having a, working full time at Mount Sinai Hospital for 10 years. Wow. During this pandemic, he was in, sitting there, you know, help, helping the nurses and everybody else admit patients and work through this entire pandemic. While he was working, he was staying in shape and letting me know that I will be ready on four weeks' notice if you can get me a fight. And that's a guy you want to see get the opportunity. And the, and the WBC gave the kid, their, you know, one of their heroes of the pandemic awards. Right, I've seen that. Kind of things. And, 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 and a couple of the news stations in New York right now are looking at doing features on him before Great. he leaves for Vegas. But the kid is like a New York hero. And, he, and he, he was a terrific Golden Gloves champion in New York. He was a great amateur boxer here. He's been a regular on Broadway boxing. Some New York fans know him for a long time. But right. this kid earned this opportunity. Yeah. And, I, and you know what? Pedraza 140. I mean, Pedraza's a great fighter, but at 140, I'm not so sure. I think it's well, a good Well, I can tell you, I like storylines, and I can tell you who I'll be rooting for. It's the guy. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are going to root for this kid. Now, by the way, whatever happens in the fight doesn't diminish the story. And no, who this kid is. Absolutely. It's okay. Fighter. If if he loses the fight, it's okay because you know what? We know him. We got to know him. Exactly. We got and to exactly. see him. And, 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 and I want to tell you, Mikel Lapierre is the kind of fighter and the kind of person that people should look up to. So I think it's actually very cool. And I haven't seen the story told, but ESPN should do a feature on it. Absolutely. This kid's on one of your first, your first fight cards. You know, I, you know I, I got another guy. Look, Toka Khan, maybe, you know, we're talking about a fight involving him. I mean, it's not done. But, but an example, storyline, he lost his grandmother to the virus. I mean, there's a lot of people. There's, yes. And, and, and I'll tell you this, the fighters, the, what I call the lunch pail guys, the blue collar guys, the guys that are world class fighters and contenders, often rated guys that are out there, they know they have to fight multiple times and perform to make money. And those guys right now are hungry. They're not yeah. going to bitch about the persons being offered, no, you're understanding right. that there are no gates. You know, I'm I not think, having. I think moving forward, we're going to get a lot of great fights because you're going to have people during this pandemic, whether they're A, B, or C fighters that are hungry like a motherfucker. I think the A fighters, too, a lot of them are going to come around. And I, yeah. think, um, and I really do believe, I said this all along, I think we'll start with some decent fights, not the biggest names or whatever. Guys are going to want to fight. 
Um, guys that have been grossly overpaid are going to have to understand that to get paid like they're used to, they're going to have to take big time risks. If you want to make $3 million, you are got to fight a $3 million fight. Yeah, agree. And if I mean, you don't, gotta, you're going to get $3 million. We got to wrap it up. I have a final question and you have to answer it quick. One person in this business that you could punch, slap, trip, or lock in a room, who is it? And if you don't fucking answer this, I'm going to answer it for you because I have the same person that you probably do that I would punch. Well, there's one guy, but I don't even want to mention his name because I haven't. And that's the same guy. I'm and, no, but I want to tell, I'm not going to mention his name because I haven't mentioned his name in a decade. And it would, and I think that like I would give him a big like burst by mentioning his name. But there is a guy out there who's so reprehensible that I I I know that the thing that bothers him the most is that to me he doesn't exist. See, I know and you know that his whole storyline is bullshit. Yes, that his whole yes. life is bullshit. Yes. And, and that he someone, suckered, and that he suckered a bunch me. of suckers. He suckered a bunch of suckers into believing he was a real guy in boxing when yes. he's not. He's a no, not at all. A fraud. A and but we're not going to give him. But we got to wrap it up because we're. I'm not mentioning his name because he don't <laughs> deserve it. And I agree, and I'm not going to mention it. But he's the same person I'd fucking punch in the face. All right, we got to wrap. Yeah. It's, it's been, been a pleasure. Oh, Thank you, buddy. What, what's one more toast uh, to a good Absolutely weekend? Absolutely, stay safe, and I'll be to in return to a return to boxing and to all our friends, family, and everybody we know. Stay Absolutely. safe. Absolutely, and I got to tell you because I got to talk business. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you.